Being rich and famous isn't all fun and games. Let's get right into why it's always rule number uno. Never let no one know how much dough you hold, because you know this could happen. Number five, Rolex Rippers. The Rolex Rippers were a group of women that went to affluent areas of the UK and robbed wealthy gentlemen of their designer watches. Police caught one member, Stefania Tanika, who they arrested and later sent to prison after she robbed a guy at a country club. But Tanika was only one member of the gang, one cog in this vicious wheel of criminals. Authorities linked roughly 15 other crimes to the group, but have been unable to find enough evidence to take these women down. In July 2022, two women approached a man outside a veterinary office. They asked if he would fill out a survey like a totally normal day. Then, things took a turn for the worse. One of them shook his hand and pulled the old give a hug while attempting to remove his watch after he completes the survey move. But it didn't work. The man realized what was going on and bravely fended the woman off. What do we say when a terrifying survey taker tries to get your watch? Not today. Terrified, he fled the scene and called the police. The Ripper's gang targeted older men, usually dressed in polo shirts, possibly because they really don't like that look. Also, their bare arms meant their Rolexes were on display, making it easier for the group to choose their targets and even remove the watches without their victims noticing. It's also noteworthy that the Rippers in this gang are not, and never have been, associated with Jesse and the Rippers. These are completely different Rippers, so for the five of you out there that got that reference, your memory shall remain unsullied. Retired wine merchant Derek Freestone was on his way with a friend to the Goodwood Festival of Speed motor racing event. They stopped at a pharmacy and Freestone waited in the car. He sat in the passenger seat of his friend's Mercedes when two women approached him, knocking on the window and asking him to sign a petition for a deaf school. And Freestone is known to not hate deaf people or their schools, so he agreed. As he finished signing, one of the women threw her arms around him and tried to give him smooch. He was so taken aback by the unexpected smooch that he forgot there was a second lady who, at some point, was shaking his hand. After he pushed the woman away, he realized his gold Rolex, worth roughly $15,000, was gone. He leapt out of the car and chased the women, but they had already disappeared. Alan Bruce, another casualty of the marauding gang, was robbed the day after Freestone. He parked his Audi TT Sport when two women approached him. They asked him to sign the same petition for school. Bruce is left-handed and also wore his Yachtmaster Rolex on his left hand. One of the women said she loved his aftershave and asked him for a hug. It didn't smell good enough for smooches? It's like Alan and Bruce got rejected and he didn't even know it. He put his right hand over his back pocket where he kept his wallet, but didn't think to protect his watch. He didn't know it was gone when he pushed the woman off him with his left hand. Currently, the gang have been using the same tactic to target women in wealthy areas, stealing their purses, jewelry, and wallets. The Rolex ripping duo approached a woman in her 70s asking for a donation to their charity before making it mandatory by nabbing 1,000 pounds from the woman's handbag. On the same day, elderly couple Michael and Enid Smith were approached by the same two women asking for donations. The elderly couple were forced to fight off the pair as one of the Rolex rippers shoved Mr. Smith against his car door, unable to rip his Rolex. The incidents are frequent and widespread, and it's difficult to track down the watcher. Even though each Rolex has its own serial number, the numbers won't be looked at unless the watch is brought in to be serviced. Many wealthy men in the UK have angrily lamented the fact that they can't display their wealth as openly as they used to. How will the other rich guys at the country club know that they're rich too without a massively expensive expensive timepiece. Life can be hard sometimes, guys. Number four, flashy in Ibiza. In June 2022, burglars broke into the Ibiza vacation home of Paris Saint Germain soccer star Marco Verratti. Verratti was renting the home from Brazilian world renowned soccer player Ronaldo. The burglars burgled cash, watches, and jewelry totaling around $3 million. The burglars entered the house early on a Sunday morning instead of going to church like their mothers would want when the soccer player and his family were out. While Verratti didn't post about being in Ibiza, his wife, model Jessica 80, just had to brag on social media. 80 posted 
photos and videos of herself in the Balearic Islands, including a bikini picture where she specifically said she was in Ibiza. Verratti wasn't the only famous person that liked a vacation in the Balearic Islands. The area attracts wealthy, affluent people looking for a vacation under the sun. Even royalty vacations there, including Prince William and Princess Kate, who frequently go to Kate's uncle's home, which is the same area as the house where Verratti was staying. Cristiano Ronaldo, who's different from the other Ronaldo, and Lionel Messi, also vacationed in the area that summer, dropping up to $300,000 weekly for a rental home. Police investigated the case and arrested six people in connection with the robbery, suspecting they were part of a more prominent criminal gang that specialized in home robberies. Another soccer player, Danny Almo, was robbed in June 2022 in Valencia, Spain. He was leaving a hairdresser's with his brother when a mugger tore his $28,000 Rolex off his wrist. The previous day, he posted pictures wearing the watch on Instagram. The robber's accomplice waited nearby in their getaway car. Almo's brother tried to stop him by grabbing the vehicle as it drove away, but he couldn't hold on to it for long and suffered minor injuries from being dragged by the car. He was treated at the scene by an ambulance. Almo reported the incident to the Spanish police. While rich and famous people visit Ibiza all the time, their wealth and status make them easy targets for burglaries and robberies, especially when they post their whereabouts and flaunt their assets on social media. Number three, even safes aren't safe. English soccer player Reese James's home safe was stolen after a group of robbers broke into his house in September 2021. Officers arrived at the scene after receiving reports of a residential burglary. They initially arrested two men in connection with the case, but released them without further action. Security camera footage caught the group in the act. At least four people walked up James's driveway and shined flashlights into his house. In one of the videos, the group rolled the large safe across the driveway, but struggled to open the property's electric gates with the heavy safe in tow. Reese James might have been young when the robbery occurred, but he'd already had an incredibly successful soccer career with Chelsea FC in England. His success made him wealthy, but he kept valuables that money couldn't buy in his safe. Those prizes were his medals for Euro 2020, Champions League, and Super Cup. James shared the security camera footage of the robbers on social media, appealing to his fans to help identify the individuals in the videos who made his house less safe. He told his followers that he was okay and said he was working with police, advisors, and Chelsea FC and had strong leads as to who the perpetrators were. Unfortunately, James had already dealt with being robbed. In 2020, he was at a charity event with the Felix Project, serving food to hungry children, when someone broke into his car and stole charity gifts. As James left the event, he saw his car window had been smashed. He would donate the gifts later that day and took to social media to express his frustration and disappointment over the whole ordeal. Soccer players and their families are often targets of home invasion. Burglars entered Wayne Rooney's mansion in 2016, and Frank Lampert has dealt with four separate robberies, including a break-in in May 2020. It's easy to know when these players won't be home since their matches are so well publicized. Steven Gerrard was playing in the Champions League in 2007 against Ajax when intruders broke into his house. Ian Wright was playing in Brazil when burglars entered his home. Unfortunately, sometimes the players were home. Robbers held Tottenham midfielder Deli Ali at gunpoint when they broke into his home. An armed gang forced their way into Derby center back Phil Jagielka's home in 2009 and held him at knife point. Sounds like being rich and famous isn't always the answer. Number two, that's fake art. Pei Shen Kin's Queen's neighbors knew something was odd about him. He was an artist who liked to dry his paintings in the sun, propping them up outside his modest home. However, he kept his windows covered, and a man in an expensive car often came to the house carrying new paintings. Surely, the man in the nice car should have been picking up art from Kin, not bringing it to him. Later, they would learn that Kin, the 73-year-old Chinese immigrant, fooled the richest people in the art world when he created dozens of works modeled after America's modernist painters. He made pieces mimicking the works of famous painters and sold them for a total of $80 million. At first, Keen struggled to sell his pieces in the U.S. and only earned a few thousand dollars for his imitation. As New York was the center of the art world, he was disheartened by how difficult it was to make a name for himself. Keen made his living selling portraits on the streets, imitating the styles of famous artists. In the early 1990s, art dealer Jose Carlos Bergantinos Diaz discovered Keen's art and recruited him to make paintings in the style of abstract expressionists. Diaz made his girlfriend, Lafiero Rosario, Alice sell the counterfeit. For the next 15 years, Keen produced over 60 paintings, imitating the signature styles of Jackson Pollock, Barnett Newman, Robert Motherwell, and Richard de Bencorn. These paintings are bad enough as it is, so it's even worse to overpay for fake versions of terrible art. It's a scam that the original pieces sold for as much as they did. Rosales claimed they were authentic pieces by the artist and were only recently discovered. She told dealers that most of the paintings came from a collector who inherited his collection from his father and that the collector refused to release his identity. The 
elite Manhattan art dealership, Nodler & Company, sold works from Rosales for millions of dollars. They had a loyal customer base who relied on their expertise as they had been in business for over 100 years. The pieces sold for millions of dollars, with a fake Jackson Pollock going for $17 million and a Rodko abstract being sold for $8.3 million. Generally, art is part of an unregulated business, and investing in works of art is risky. No matter how much you spend on a piece, its value might not correlate to that amount, and it could be worth tens of thousands of dollars or nothing. It's not illegal to make a replica of a painting or even sign it in the name of the original artist, but it has to be clear that it's a copy. Rosales never made it clear that Keen's pieces were fake. Another trick that Keen used was to make his work look older by using tea or even dirt from a vacuum cleaner, misleading buyers into thinking the art was much older than it was. Members of the art community started raising questions about the authenticity of some of the Motherwell works that Rosales dealt with. The concerns reached the FBI, and in 2009, Rosales and Keen's scheme fell apart. Angry buyers, including fashion director Kuwaiti Shika, filed lawsuits against the dealer and demanded millions of dollars in reimbursement and damages. The reputations of people that vouched for the works were destroyed. The Nodler Gallery faced so many lawsuits that the gallery closed in 2011 after being in business for 165 years. Federal authorities arrested Rosales, and she was held without bail due to fears that she was a flight risk. 2013, she pleaded guilty to money laundering, fraud, and tax evasion. The court ordered her to forfeit $81 million. She cooperated with authorities and received a three-month jail sentence. Rosales said her abusive boyfriend coerced her into the scam. He was the mastermind behind the whole thing, and she only participated out of fear that he would hurt her and their daughter as he had been violent towards them on several occasions. Diaz fled to Spain and avoided the charges awaiting him in the U.S., including a 12-count federal indictment alleging fraud, conspiracy, money laundering, and false statements. His brother, who was also involved in the scheme, fled to Spain as well. Hei Shen Kin disappeared. His house was empty, and neighbors said they hadn't seen him for months. He usually spent half the year in China, but this time was different. His garden was filled with newspapers and stray cats rather than art, and he left the doors unlocked. The feds believed he was hiding in China. Kin lied in interviews about recreating the paintings and knowing Rosales. His charges were one count each of wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, and making false statements to the FBI. He faced 45 years in prison. Together, the group committed the most extensive art fraud in modern U.S. history. It lasted 15 years, made more than $80 million, caused the demise of one of New York's oldest and most respected galleries, and scammed rich people. Number one, family VAT scam. The cop family committed the largest UK payroll fraud of its kind, stealing over $55 million. The group consisted of Jeffrey Cop, his son Joshua, and his brother Andrew. Together, they ran Central Payroll Specialists, known as CPS, a company they later rebranded as Quality Premier Services, or QPS. The cops conducted an elaborate VAT scam. VAT, or Value Added Tax, is paid when buying goods or services. For reference, the standard VAT amount in the UK is 20%. Recruitment companies use the family's business for payroll services, and QPS would issue invoices with a 20% VAT added. Although they claim their sales amounted to £20 million, or $25 million, they earned more than £250 million, or $300 million, and kept the extra VAT. Jeffrey and Joshua didn't pay any income tax between 2009 and 2015, while Andrew only paid £16,000, around $19,000. Joshua loved to show off his money, and would take pictures of himself in private jets on trips to Las Vegas and posing with briefcases full of cash. And that's exactly why his family got caught. He wanted to brag about how much money he had. What did Biggie say rule numero uno was at the beginning of this video? Joshua caught the authorities' attention when he showed some of those flashy pics to a prison inmate. It seems like prison inmates will definitely pass along information if it benefits them in the end. Joshua spent his money on a $5 million home, and he drove Bentleys worth over $360,000. He registered nine cars in his name, including a Ferrari, Lamborghini, and a Rolls Royce. Between 2014 and 2015, Joshua transferred $11 million from the CPS and QPS accounts into his own personal account. His mansion was filled with luxury items like gold and jeweled watches and designer clothing. Joshua loved high-end department stores like Selfridges and Harrods, where he spent hundreds of thousands of pounds. Detectives searched his phone and learned the true origins of his wealth. He had pictures of a notepad with calculations explaining how the that fraud worked and how it was split between him, his father, and his uncle. Joshua's father, Jeffrey, lived just as lavishly as his son. He owned multiple mansions, four in the UK and one in Malaga, Spain. He had his own racing horse that he paid roughly $145,000 for training and stabling. Jeffrey traveled mainly by private jet and dropped $360,000 on private flights to Malaga and other places 
between July 2014 and January 2015. He hid 55,000 pounds in cash in his London home, breaking it up and keeping it in various places, including inside his Bentley, likely the last place a criminal would look for something valuable. Andrew Kopp was also a big spender. He owned eight homes, six he bought in cash, including one in Malaga alongside his brother. His car collection included a Range Rover, Lamborghini, and Bentley. He had several Rolex watches and collected works of art. Britain was suffering financially at the time, and the $55 million that the three were burning through could have eased that burden. Even worse, they barely paid their own taxes for many years. Police arrested them in May 2015 and confiscated as much of their cash and assets as possible. Not even the arrest slowed Joshua down. He traveled to Miami in June 2015 and came home with hundreds of thousands of pounds of jewelry, watches, and cash. In 2017, a court found the trio guilty of conspiracy to cheat the public revenue and money laundering. The three pledged their innocence, claiming they didn't know about a VAT debt as they left all of that up to their accountant. That sounds like a cop out to us. A judge sentenced Jeffrey to 10 years in prison, Andrew to 9 years, and Joshua to 8 years. Family members in the court cried when they received their sentences. The judge also banned Jeffrey from running a company for 15 years, Andrew from running one in 10, and Joshua for eight. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section if you would take the Kardashian level of fame for $5 million.